Lovely lady and also very funny. You've seen her on Evening at the Improv. Please welcome Bernadette Laquette, ladies and gentlemen. Please. Yeah. Hello. How are you guys doing tonight? All right? Yeah. I'm glad to be here. I've had a very lazy day. You know, one of those days where you don't feel like doing anything. I stood in a revolving door for about 10 minutes till someone came along to push. <laughs> Couldn't handle it. I like living in New York. It's fun here. There's a lot of strange people here. There's things you have to know in New York you don't have to know in other places, like, is it rude to throw something in a trash can when someone's looking through it? <laughs> See, I'm originally from San Francisco. Beautiful city, racially, very liberal city, too. This is true. The magazine in San Francisco with the highest circulation is one called BWMT, and that stands for Black and White Men Together. <laughs> See, some people don't like that, yeah. I know you believe white people should be with white people and black people should be with black people, right? None of that mixing stuff, no. But I think we can all agree racial prejudice is very stupid. It is. Because if you spend time with someone from another race and really get to know them, you can find other reasons to hate them. <laughs> it's not because you're different, it's because you're a butthead. <laughs> I'm single right now. It's uh, kind of weird, you know, hard being single these days. I'm getting older, starting to have these recurring nightmares that become this spinster old maid like Mr. Drysdale's secretary on the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Remember her chasing after guys like Jethro? Yeah. That scares me, because I don't know where you're supposed to go meet guys these days. I've been going to a lot of sleazy rock and roll bars. Yeah, because I'm... <laughs> for you, yeah. See, I'm looking for true love. That's what I want, yeah. I did meet a nice guy once in a bar, too. And we talked for a while, he asked for my phone number, and I got really excited because I met someone I liked. Maybe this could be it. And then a couple days went by and he didn't call, and a week went by, and then a month went by and he didn't call. Then I started feeling kind of sad and depressed, thinking, well, why did he ask for my phone number if he wasn't going to call me, you know? Why didn't he like me? What's wrong with me? And then I found out he was dead. <laughs> but I felt really good, because then I knew it wasn't me. Because <laughs> I care. I do care. But actually, I've never been in love before. See, that scares me. That's one of my three fears. I have three fingers here, three big fears. One is that... I'm never going to be in love with anyone. Second is that I'm going to be old and I'm going to be all by myself and lonely. And the third is that I'm going to spontaneously combust. Because <laughs> that can happen, you know, I've read the star. You, know? <laughs> you can be walking along, feel kind of feverish, poof, you're gone. <laughs> I saw Spinal Tap, yeah. <laughs> I was in the supermarket last week and I was looking through a National Enquirer. And you know they have pictures of children that need to be adopted in the Inquirer? Who wants to be adopted by someone who reads that paper on a regular basis? <laughs> I think not. I spoke to my parents today. I had kind of a weird thought about them too. Maybe you guys can relate to this. This happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to a lot of you. Um, uh, I've never seen my parents naked. Are you supposed to? Have you guys ever seen my parents naked? <laughs> My family was so sexually inhibited. I remember once I caught a glimpse of my father in the shower. His pajamas soaking wet. <laughs> it was ugly, it was. But I love my parents. Uh, but I must say this. You know how parents can do annoying things like trying to talk to you? Yeah. <laughs> and you ever have this happen? You're sitting there at their house. They're talking to you. But the whole time you're just fantasizing about how you're going to redecorate the place when it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's an evil thought, huh? But they're not supportive of me doing comedy at all, which is kind of a drag. You'd like to see your parents behind what you try to do. I invited them to a show. My father goes, well, you're just going to fail anyway. <laughs> Thanks a lot. But now, every time I'm having a show that's going really badly, I feel like he would be so proud. <laughs> but this is a great job. Look at me. I'm doing comedy, you know. Best job I've ever had. I used to do runway modeling, fashion shows, that kind of thing. I went to this modeling school. They taught us how to be models. And they said, when you walk down that runway, to get that special model attitude. Look at the women in the audience and think, although you can afford this, you'll never fit into it, you fat pig. <laughs> the only way this is gonna look good on you is wrapped around your ugly face, bitch. 
That's it for me. Thanks a lot, you guys. You're great. Hey, Chris. Yeah, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. How long would you cook a cat? I don't know. About 10 minutes on each side. Great. Thanks. Sure.